Hi, I'm Marty Shupak. Welcome to Shupak Sports, and this is sponsored by T-Ball America and tballamerica.com. Please check out my site, tballamerica.com. You are watching now T-Ball Practice Template number 13. And what we're going to do on this practice template is we're going to go for about 10 or 11 just hitting drills. That's it. Some are really basic. So bear with me if you've watched some of these templates. I'll get into some more detailed hitting drills for T-ball players. Please subscribe. Uh, I would love a thumbs up. I'd love a comment, whatever you could do to help this format continue. If this is your first time, just so you know, basically I sit here, I go through different drills. I give commentary and tips. I try to keep it under 25 minutes. I don't want to bore you. I try to go very fast. I'll try to give you an advanced tip halfway through the session. Hopefully you'll remember that as you continue to coach baseball and softball. But I like to start every session with a trivia question, a baseball trivia question. And this is this week's baseball trivia question. What Major League Baseball manager has the record for being ejected in his career, the career record. What baseball manager has the record for being ejected from uh, baseball games? And this is not just one year, it's a whole career total. And I'm gonna give you choices. Is it Bobby Cox? Is it Earl Weaver? Is it Leo DeRocha? Or is it John McGraw? All right, we're gonna come back to that. All right, let's get right into this um, hitting right now. And as I said, some are very basic. Bear with me. Again, our goal in when we coach T-ball, we really have only one goal, and that's to have the players to want to come back and play baseball and softball the following year. We want it to be a very positive experience. We want to put players in the best position to succeed, all right? For a lot of you that don't think I'm competitive, believe me, you've never seen me on the field. I am competitive, but there's a time and a place for that, and T-ball is not, not that time and place. You'll see as you uh, continue to coach how competitive things can get. Keep it simple for these T-ball players, okay? The first drill, and I'll try to hold it up pretty far away so you can see, is the T-ball target tape drill. What I'm doing is I'm just taking a batting tee, and this you could just do for 30 seconds or a minute, okay? And I'm really simplifying swinging at a target. I, I'm using a batting tee. Make sure you use a plastic bat, all right? Don't use a regular bat because you don't want to have any sort of sting, for the young players. Again, we want them to continue to play. We want the, we don't want to drive them away from the game. And what I do is I take different colored tape and I use um, what they call painter's tape. And basically I use the three colors I use are blue, red, and yellow. And then I'll yell out a color. And then the player has to try to aim at that color, swing and hit it. Okay. I've also used a tree I've used the corner of a building with chalk. And uh, you might want to consider using one of those noodles like kids swim with because, it, you know, there's no way they get a sting on that. And all we're doing is putting players in the best position to succeed. And I would say this, if you think it's better to separate the color of tape, I don't. I like them close together. Why? Because if a player is aiming for one color, hits another color, he's still going to be very close. The point to this drill is you want the player to keep his eye on what he's swinging at. All right. So that's the T-ball target tape drill. Next drill. And again, this is for very young people. If you have returning T-ball players, then they're going to be bored by this. You have to put them in another drill, more advanced. But most of these basic drills are at-home drills. And if you're a T-ball coach, or if you're like a commissioner or a little league president, 
you might want to offer these to the parents and you want to try to really get the parents involved more with the kids. And you want to tell them, listen, it, it's not just showing up on the field for practice and games. We want you to do things at home, just as in school, you don't want to just leave it to the teacher. You want to help your child with their homework. You want to monitor them. This is a little drill I started doing with my kids. It's called the bubble hit. And all it is is an introduction to hitting and uh, swinging at bubbles. And what I do is, and I'm, excuse me, as I bend down, I'm a big believer in these big red plastic bats. They also come in color yellow. You can get them at the big box stores like a Walmart, Target, okay? And I have a number of them. I think they're terrific. The reason I like them is you're giving young T-ballers, four, five, six-year-olds, a better chance to succeed. And what I do is I take a bottle of bubbles, and with that bat, I blow the bubbles, and as you blow the bubbles, very important, you have to back away from your uh, son or daughter. Remember, this is more of an at-home drill, okay? I started doing this when my son was like two and a half, three, and he got the biggest kick out of it. So I continued to do it with my other two kids. And just so you know, there are no style points in this, okay? And you don't have to use a bat. You could use an old tennis racket or you can even use like a kitchen spatula, just having them swing at an object. It's getting them used to hitting a baseball or a softball, okay? And they're gonna have fun. The way they have fun is if you do it with enthusiasm, okay? If you're enthusiastic, enthusiastic your son and daughter will be enthusiastic, all right? Remember, you're the parent. When you do this, the picture doesn't show. You want to stay low. And as you're blowing the bubbles, you want to back up. Remember, the bubbles rise. If you're going to do it standing up, they're not going to have a great chance to hit it. Kids love this. Just takes like really a couple of minutes to do. A very similar drill, which I began to do with my middle child, is the balloon hit. It's just like the bubble hit. Helps in the eye-hand uh coordination or hand-eye coordination. And I blew up different size balloons, okay? And I would like kneel down and I'd toss it up and they have to hit the balloon. Now, what you might want to do is with this is after they hit it once, you try to communicate to them to keep hitting it with the big red bat or tennis racket before it touches the ground. They get a big kick out of this too. The, the bubble hit in this drill, you can't really do as a team or more than one player or brothers or sisters. You have to do it individually. Otherwise, they're going to get a bat in their head or a tennis rack in their head. All right. So this is the balloon hit drill. And uh, I'll give you a little hint. What I did is I blew up different size balloons. Okay. This is a drill I tried. And it's just an idea. Just for another item, it's called the tissue hit drill. And what I did is I happen to have one of these grabbers or grippers in my uh, garage. You've seen this. Uh, store owners have them or hardware stores to get things off the a higher shelf. And uh, I would try to put tissues and drop it. And which is interesting, the tissues don't go down straight. You've seen them. They go down back and forth very slow, and you have your son and daughter hit hit the tissues. Now, they could swing multiple times. It doesn't matter. I've also used rags because sometimes the tissues don't hold well inside the grabber. Don't go out and buy a $50 grabber. If just This is an idea if you happen to have it in your garage. I've also used newspapers. Now, as we're going to a I guess, paperless society where everything is on the internet. I like using newspapers with the young kids, uh, pitching and catching. You can only do it with a short distance because if you roll it up and you toss it, it'll separate. But the reason I like it is it's a non-threatening item. And keep in mind, I've repeated this 
two of the biggest things that will drive kids away from a sport, especially baseball or softball, is uh, embarrassment amongst, amongst their peers and getting hurt. We don't want young players to get hurt. All right. Next drill, this is T-ball, so we want to teach kids how to hit the ball off the tee. This is the beach ball plunger. And I began using this because I found that first-time T-ballers have a hard time hitting a regular-sized baseball off a tee. We want to put them in the best position to succeed. And if you, you've noticed here, I have it right here. I have a little plunger. Of course, it's a non-used plunger. You want to get it if you go to the one of the home center stores. This, this small handle plunger is like was no more than like three dollars. You put it in the tee, and I use a light uh, kickball. This happens to be a soccer ball, which is a little harder to hit off it. But again, this is good for at home, and it's also good if you have as a team. If you want to divide the kids into different stations, take the younger kids that are having a hard time hitting the ball off the tape. Now, what I do is this. I use the progression method also with this drill. And by progression method, I mean is I'll start with a beach ball and I'll bring different size balls and work down to a regular tee ball. All right, so that's the beach ball uh, plunger drill. Okay, next. This is a very, very important drill. I want you to really pay attention because it really works. This is the T-ball target hitting drill. We all say in baseball, any sport, basketball, even football, catching the ball, keep your eye on the ball. Repeat it over and over again. And what this is doing is we're putting, if you look closely, an animal sticker on the ball. And I maintain that all leagues should be allowed to do this in games all right if your league says you can't do it you got to fight them for it we want kids to be successful and what you're doing is the animal sticker the player has to keep their eye on the ball and you tell them okay go ahead hit the elephant or hit the giraffe and what this is is it's it's a simplifies hitting giving the players a focal point to aim at that they're familiar with and it will help keep them from turning their head. I prefer animal stickers. I tried using fruit stickers one year. It did not work. Kids love animal stickers. Again, for the very young kids, if you have return players coming that are like six and a half years old, don't even bother with this. They're going to just want to play baseball, t-ball, whatever. They, they actually are going to want to play without the T eventually during the year. All right. And the benefit is it's just a technique for getting kids to focus on the ball um, with the picture. All right. Now, I just want to take a break and uh, give you, try to go over a couple of, of uh, advanced tips. I've mentioned this before. Make sure every year that you're coaching, you have a parents meeting. I don't care if it's only 10 minutes. I promise you this. As you move up the ladder coaching older kids after T-ball, you'll begin to get more and more complaints. If you have a parents meeting, it's not going to cut out the complaints. It'll cut down the complaints anywhere from like 40 to 60%. You'll learn every year what to add in your parents meeting if there was something that more than one parent was complaining about the year before. Now, I just want to show you a technique that I tried early in my coaching career. We had a problem where some of our bats got mixed up with other teams and there were some arguments. So what I proposed, I was on the board of directors in our little league is uh, I wanted to color the end of the bats for my players. I wanted to do it to the bats for the uh, that the kids owned and also the bats that were given to my team. Now, what I found was the first year, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want me to deface 
the league property. But all I'm doing is really doing the very end. And what this is doing is it's showing ownership which teams' bats they are. After the first year, they actually brought it up at the board. They said they, in retrospect, it was a good idea because there were some bats that was getting mixed up. And all I told, they asked me how to do it. And all I told them was this. I took a piece of cardboard. Excuse me. I put the bat in the hole. And I took, my color was red, red spray paint. And I spray painted just the end of the knob. Nothing else is, the, the uh, paint's not going anywhere else. It's not going to affect the bat at all. What you have to do as coach is you have to make sure your league will allow it and don't do it if your parents won't let you. You know, some bats could be up to like $200, $250. Make sure the parent agrees. But trust me, if you do it for your team, it'll make life very much easier during the year because you'll be able to identify your team's bats. All right, I was going to go into some batting practice, but we're just – Time is flying by, so I'm going to have to do it another time. Next drill is uh, hit the target off the, in, the, in the fence drill. And what I'm doing here is it, I'm taking a skill drill, and really this is more luck than every, anything else, but I'm trying to stimulate the players, and I'm putting like a rags in the fence, and – you're not using hard balls. I'm using plastic balls. And you're seeing as the kids hit the ball off the tee, if it'll hit any of the rags. It's kind of like a carnival type, type atmosphere. And make sure, though, that the kids, they'll have a tendency. They'll lift their head too early when they swing because they want to see if the ball is going to hit the rag. Again, it's completely luck. You want to have them focus on hitting the ball watching the bat go through the ball. But this is just another item in the drill that's giving them some stimulation, okay? I've also done this against a, a, a cement wall with circles made of some chalk or whatever. Again, you have to check your league. The policy is about the fence. Some leagues are very strict. You don't want to hit hard balls against the fence. All right, next drill. And these are all batting drills. I think we're going through 11. This is knock down the cones drill. And what I'm doing is I'm setting up cones, small plastic cones, not big construction cones. Uh, usually they're soccer cones. And I have half the team on this side. They'll swing the bat, trying to uh, uh, hit the ball between first and second. This side will try to hit the ball between second and third. Again, we're adding another skill it's not a skill what kind of luck but it's stimulating the players and you want to see how many cones they could knock down you can make it a competition you have to i wouldn't do this the first week of the season but i would do it middle of the season okay it's a fun game with a lot of hitting repetitions and the kids like this next drill i've showed this before it's very popular more of an individual drill. I've taken it down to the team. Is the station? It's the recycled bin drill. I'm using household items to hit off the tee. You have to take out any sharp items like tops of the cans or the cans themselves. In fact, what you might want to do is keep it to plastics or cardboard. And you're showing kids again. You want to stimulate them. They're hitting another item that is not a not a ball. Okay, and I'll tell you what, you do this drill, I promise you, when you run into one of your ex ball players when they're 15, 18, 21, they're going to remember this doing this drill because most coaches don't even know about it. Okay, so that's the recycled bin drill. All right, we're hitting plastic bottles, Tide, all, all that good stuff. And, you know, when you get some of the detergent plastic uh, bottles, they're, they're huge. And we want to create success. All right. Next hitting drill. Again, we're just doing all hitting drills. This is the, um, what is this? I'm sorry. The tennis racket hitting drill. 
What I'm doing is I'm taking a four inch cinder block. I'm bouncing a tennis ball. This picture is not, actually not showing what right. The ball's going to be going straight up. And the player has an old tennis racket and he's swinging it like it's a, a baseball bat. It's This is more of an individual drill. I did do this with the team as a separate drill, but I mainly did this with my kids in the backyard. You, a key to this is you want to bounce the ball and then you have to move back. You don't want to get hit with the tennis racket. Again, in this drill, there are no style points. So what if they end up swinging it with one hand? We don't care. We want them to do the activity. All right. And the benefit is the uh, the team ball players almost guaranteed a sure success hitting a moving object. Remember, you save this drill towards the end of the year. By the end of the year, the kids are going to want to play real baseball. They want to have pitching. They want to hit a moving object. This is a great drill to do. Okay. Next drill. This is the last drill. I've showed this before. It is called King Arthur. And what I do is I take a, it's great for a hand-eye coordination. It's in that, more of an at-home drill, but I've done it as a station. Take an inch and three-eight closet pole and they hold it but they have to leave exposed on each side, like anywhere from six inches to a foot. And just like the old days of King Arthur, they try to knock things down, holding the stick. I use these plastic balls. So that basically wraps it up for the, um, for the hitting drills. Again, my only rule with my drills are, if you can improve it, please do. There is no royalty on kids having fun. I'm going to get to the trivia question. I want you to just please subscribe. If you're involved in the league, please let your T-ball commissioner know. Let your T-ball parents know. You want your players and your league to get better. All right? Okay, as far as products, uh, a lot of you have been asking me for... My video, T-Ball Skills and Drills, you have to review this. I'll put it, I'll make it the first link down below. And um, it, it'll link you to Amazon, but it's also free on Canopy through your library and Hoopla through your library. So I highly recommend T-Ball Skills and Drills video. I'll put a link right underneath. Another recommendation, I would look for this book. If you're going to continue coaching, Championship Baseball Drills has 115 drills. And just like the pictures I've showed you, there are pictures of each drill with an explanation and the benefit. The reason I would recommend this to you now is because a lot of the drills that I'm showing you are included in this, but you'll use this as a resource all the way up to when your kids are 12, 13 years old, if you continue coaching, I promise you. If you don't have the money to buy it, don't buy it. Go to your library, go to the reference table, ask them to get it. If they resist, because I self-published my books, you could insist upon it, have your league president make a phone call, and they'll get it. That's about it. We're going to wrap it up. And um, let's see. Uh, oh, trivia question. Let's go through the answer now. The question was, what MLB Major League Baseball manager has been ejected the most in their career? Was it Bobby Cox, Earl Weaver, Leo DeRocher, or John McGraw? Well, the answer is Bobby Cox. He leads the pack. He was ejected 162 times. In second place is John McGraw, the all-time manager mostly with the New York Giants. He was ejected 121 times. Leo DeRocher was ejected 100 times. And in fourth place, one of my favorite managers, Earl Weaver, was ejected 96 times. So the answer was Bobby Cox. He was ejected 162 times in his careers. So until next time, please share all this, uh, all these drills with your league, and please share shoe pack sports youtube channel we're going to have ten thousand drills coming on board so please subscribe so for marty shoe pack and shoe pack sports 
I'll meet you at third base until next time.